Greetings, do-it-yourselfers. Today, we're gonna do a very important job. We're gonna do some cylinder head work. This will apply to any vehicle, uh, even though this is on a uh, 96 Toyota Camry engine, a 2.2 liter Toyota engine used on a whole bunch of Toyotas from I think 92 to like 2001. But once you get to the part of removing a cylinder head, it doesn't matter what car you're working on. It, it's all the same at that point. It's just a matter of different torques. But the procedures and techniques to make sure that you only do this job once still apply all across the board. And believe me, you will only wanna do this job once. It is entirely possible if you don't do this right, within seconds of starting the car, you'll hear psh, and you will be, that'll be the sound of all the money and time uh, leaving that you invested into this thing because that'll be the gasket blowing again. The first and most important step to make sure that that doesn't happen to you is to do an autopsy on the old engine. You have to find out the reason why you got into the situation where you have to do cylinder head work to begin with. And incidentally, I've got the engine removed from the car because I was doing some other things. On most vehicles, if you've never done this before, you will not have to actually remove the engine to do the cylinder head. Um, I don't show the dismantling very much in my videos because honestly, I just, I don't get it. I don't, you know, do you really need to see a video of what is the equivalent of a monkey putting sockets on a ratchet and removing bolts that are holding parts together and then removing those parts? I, you know, I don't know. I'll never understand why a water pump replacement video gets 200,000 views, whereas a diagnosis on if you need a water pump only gets 200 views, but whatever. We're gonna do kind of a combination today. But uh, the first step again, we have to find out why we're in this situation. We gotta do an autopsy on the old head. So let's do that. All right, this is the head from the old engine. Your first step before you even buy uh, anything like a cylinder head gasket, everything like that, is to, first of all, make sure you need to replace the cylinder head. Just because you have coolant mixed with the oil does not necessitate that you have to do this. If it's if you have low compression, one way or another, however you look at it, whatever your symptoms are, you're only gonna do this if for some reason you have low compression um, or some horrible internal engine failure or something like that, but almost always low compression. Even if you have coolant mixed with the oil, if you do not have low compression in one or more cylinders with that, then you may not have to do this. What most likely happened is your intake manifold is actually leaking and it's a much simpler repair than doing this. So the first step, you, you've got to have a low compression situation before you do this. Your second thing that you need to do is you have to find out the cause of the low compression. If it's the bottom end of the engine, you do a compression test, you add oil to the cylinder that's low and it greatly increases, maybe even back to normal, then that's gonna be a bottom end issue, probably worn rings, and you're looking at probably an engine rebuild in that case, so your cylinder head gasket replacement is the least of your worries. If that doesn't do anything, then you're gonna have either a cylinder head related problem or possibly some block related problem, a serious crack in the block or something, which actually also sometimes improves with oil, by the way. But you wanna make sure that you are doing this for the right reason. Now, the other thing, and this is, this is so critically important, you have to find out the cause of why you got into this situation that you had to remove the cylinder head and you got that low compression. If it's a blown gasket, that's great, but it could be a crack in the cylinder head, it could be a crack in the block. Um, in this case, this is gonna be a warped cylinder head and that's not enough. You have to find what caused that situation. In this case, it was an overheat, but what caused the overheat? The warp in the block and the cylinder head gasket failure did not cause the overheat. That is the result of an overheat condition. You may have a radiator problem, you may have a thermostat problem, but the bottom line is you have to fix whatever caused the overheat condition, which is normally what causes this type of thing that we're gonna see. You have to fix that because otherwise you're gonna put new cylinder head gasket, maybe new cylinder head even, and the whole problem is gonna happen again because you didn't fix the original cause. Cylinder head gaskets are not like hoses where they just get old and brittle and fail sometimes. Something causes it to fail. 
So if you run your tests, you have to find something that is wrong or out of spec. One thing you never do ever under any circumstance, you're never going to fix a problem by just taking the cylinder head off, replacing the gasket and putting that cylinder head back on. If you do that, you will be doing this job again. I guarantee that's one of the biggest mistakes I see people make. You have to find what's wrong and fix it. And in this case, uh, we're going to see a pretty severe warp in this cylinder head. And let's take a look at it. So the first thing I'm going to do is scrape any gasket material at all off the cylinder head. Uh, another thing that works pretty good with this is a wire wheel on a drill. And uh, another really good technique is uh, some sandpaper on a wooden block so it's perfectly flat. Um, but you want to make sure you get any gasket material off so that it doesn't affect the reading that we're going to do next. So what I've got here is a perfectly flat straight edge and a set of feeler gauges. You'll have to look up the specs for your particular model. They differ on different models. On this particular model with the Toyota 2.2, what the limit for cylinder head to block warpage is, is 2 thousandths, 0 0.002 inches. And what we're going to do is lay this flat edge up here. And um, if you saw the previous video, this, by the way, if you recognize this, this is indeed the cylinder head from the video where I did a whole bunch of um, test for failed cylinder head gasket um, procedures. So I, I already know that this leak is going to be at number three. But what we're going to do is lay this flat edge down here. And let's see where we're at. This is the rear of the engine. So this is number four. And what we're going to do is just run this feeler gauge. Now, what I'm actually doing is I'm using a, um, I don't know if it'll show up here, but a 0 0.004 gauge. And uh, that's kind of blurry, I guess, but sorry about that. Um, the reason I'm using a 0 0.004 is because I know if this gauge passes under the straight edge, we have a major, major warpage with this thing. So if I go over here, it won't pass through the gauge. Here, it won't pass through the gauge. Here, it goes right through with plenty of room. I'm sure I could do um, a much thicker gauge. And you want to make sure that if uh, there's another part where it passes through, you want to kind of do this and turn your ruler every which way, but it really doesn't matter. Once you find a spot that your gauge passes through, you are done. You don't need to find any more. You've got the, the issue figured out there. So let's talk about what we're going to do in this situation with the cylinder head. And this is the reason why you don't just fix a blown cylinder head gasket by replacing the gasket. If we were to put this cylinder head back onto the engine with a new gasket, the instant we started the car, the new gasket would fail because there is such a, a warpage there. Kind of off the point, but real interesting. I remember one time um, taking a cylinder head that was out of spec by about three thousands to a machine shop and the guy at the machine shop just ran his finger and he goes, oh yeah, yeah, right here. It's probably probably about two or three thousandths. And he just felt it with his finger. Absolutely amazing. I'm not nearly like that, but uh, I definitely recommend getting the feeler gauge. So in this situation, here's what our options are. Um, we would probably, uh, in this case, because of the budget, we're actually going to replace with a used cylinder head. That's always an option. But uh, you would have to take this to a machine shop, have them resurface the cylinder head to make it perfectly flat. Now, keep in mind that doing that is going to actually lower the surface of the cylinder head. And you may not actually be able to do that, particularly if you've got a lot of warp, because now the valves are going to open closer to the piston. So you may actually not even have this as an option. But the bottom line is you don't take the cylinder head and just put it on with a new gasket. All right. Now, let's say that we measured that up and we found that it was perfectly flat and we couldn't find any spots where there was an issue. Well, you can't then just go ahead and put that cylinder head back on. This makes things a little harder. You have to find the cause of the low compression. So the next thing you'll want to probably do is start looking at your valves and seeing if the valves are cracked. Um, very often you'll find a crack between valves on these um, 16 valve 
models, but you have to find something where the compression went to. Probably your best bet is to take the cylinder head to a machine shop. And there's a couple reasons to do this anyway. The first one is they'll be able to check for any cracks and stuff. Even if they resurface the head, you still want to check to make sure there aren't any cracks. The second thing is if the machine shop looks at the cylinder head and they find nothing wrong with it at all, well, you've got a big problem because that means that the problem is with the block and you may have a cracked block or maybe you missed that you have a ring problem you have to find out what the issue is then because again taking that cylinder head or even a brand new cylinder head and putting it on the engine you are going to have the same problem because you didn't find where the compression was lost so the next step we're going to do is let's go ahead and measure up the block and make sure there isn't a warpage on the block all right and the same thing with the block preparing the surface make sure there's no gasket material at all it's perfectly clean and smooth and again the limit on the block is two thousandths and i already tested this and i know that we're not going to find anything so actually i'm going to go down to my one thousandths gauge here and i can see even my one thousandths gauge doesn't pass anywhere through and again i can actually just look at this and and it, there's absolutely no gap whatsoever this block is perfectly flat so i feel pretty good about that but uh, let's talk about the decisions that you are going to have to make because if we decide to put a cylinder head on this, we are taking some risks. So let's talk about assessing your risk with uh, doing a cylinder head replacement with the tests that we did. So if, if you are watching this video, there's uh, one of two reasons. You're either kind of just a gearhead uh, looking at stuff. Um, well, actually there's multiple reasons. One of them is you could be one of my haters. Uh, generally uh, the Haynes manual quarterbacks that look at everything I do and say that, no, they know how to do it better, but they've turned a lot more pages than they have wrenches. Um, but I'm kind of doing this for the people that are watching this video because they are in a situation where they do not have the financial capability to have a professional mechanic do this work for them and they're considering doing it themselves. And what you're going to have to do in that situation, you're going to have to make some kind of tough de decisions. There's no way around this. So given this situation right here, we know that this cylinder head is warped. So we found the cause of the low compression. And I also checked the flatness of the block. Now, scientifically, we haven't eliminated the possibility that that block is cracked. One thing I did do is eliminate that there's other compression problems in the block. Uh, it's not the greatest uh, ceiling with the piston rings and everything, but it's well within spec. But it is possible, it is possible that there is a crack in that engine block and I would have no way of knowing it because I'm not stripping down this block and taking it to a machine shop to get Magnafluxed. We just don't have, the customer I'm doing this for does not have the budget for that even remotely. So what we're gonna do is sort of kind of use some logic here and assess our risk. A cast iron block is very, very, very unlikely to have any kind of warpage, deformity, crack, or anything before an aluminum cylinder head does because aluminum has a much, much lower heat tolerance than does cast iron. So when you've got an aluminum cylinder head and cast iron block combination, generally it's a pretty safe bet that the cast iron block is going to be okay. I've actually never seen to the contrary on an overheat situation where there was damage to the cast iron block. I've only ever seen exactly this, warpage or even sometimes cracks in the aluminum cylinder head. If you overheat an all aluminum engine, aluminum head and aluminum block, well, in, in my opinion, you've got a pretty big problem. I wouldn't even consider doing this job without taking both parts to the machine shop. At the very least, what I would strongly recommend is taking the cylinder head to the machine shop if you don't find a warpage problem. Why? Because you're hoping that the machine shop finds something with the cylinder head. If they do not, well, you're taking a much, much bigger risk replacing the cylinder head or replacing the head gasket because if they don't find anything wrong with the cylinder head no flow problems past the valves or something like that your problem could be in the block and replacing the cylinder head and gasket won't fix it so 
you know, I hope you're understanding that there is some assumption we're making that this block is fine, but I'm only doing that because I found the problem on this cylinder head. So I hope you see the logic there. Now, that said, what I did do is I got a, another cylinder head that I got from the salvage yard this afternoon. So what's the first thing we're going to have to do? Well, obviously, we're going to have to check to make sure that that cylinder head is, is in spec. And I don't recommend doing this, but we're not going to take this to a machine shop. Um, I'm just going to kind of resurface it myself using uh, some steel wool and sandpaper and stuff. But let's go ahead and check that cylinder head out. And you can actually see that the surface here almost looks like it's machined. And the way I do that is uh, starting with 150 grit sandpaper and then working down to higher and higher grits of sandpaper. It's a lot like doing a three-stage polishing job on a car where you go to lighter and lighter cutting pads. And uh, you can actually do a, a pretty good uh, sort of do-it-yourself job without the machine shop. But this all depends on whether we pass this inspection here or not. What I'm using is a 0.0015 gauge. So this is going to ensure that I'm well within spec, but still allowing a little bit of tolerance because the head is not perfectly machined. And it's looking really good. And I'll turn the ruler every which way. I will spend a good three to five minutes doing this to make absolutely sure that there's no spots. If I find a spot where the gauge passes through, I'll switch to the 0 .002, and if that passes through, well, then we got a problem. Then we got another decision to make. Do we want to try to get another cylinder head, or do we want to go to the machine shop? Again, you're, you're always balancing out your cost with your risk. The more you spend, the less risk you will take. But I've actually already checked this before, so this is all just show for the camera. This cylinder head actually passes down to the 1,000th gauge, so I'm pretty satisfied that we've got good block surface and good head surface. Nothing like good head. And uh, one really quick tip here, if you aren't going to be able to finish putting the cylinder head and the block together on the first day, which you almost certainly won't be able to if you're kind of a beginner at this. What I recommend doing is using WD-40 and spraying it over the block and inside the cylinders. Make sure to also turn over the crankshaft. Of course, the engine will most likely be inside the car, but it's the same thing. You just want to prevent any rusting of the surfaces, and this WD-40 does a great job of doing that. Another great thing to do is to cover this with a plastic bag, keep dust and anything from falling out and stuff like that. But uh, what we're going to do is actually go ahead and prepare everything for this installation. The first thing I'm going to do, and I highly, highly recommend that you do this, I'm going to clean the bolt holes on the block. You're going to definitely want to wear safety glasses with this because you will have stuff blow out at you. And you'll also want to blow compressed air through your coolant galleys and also any oil passageways as well. But most importantly, we've got to get these bolt, bolt holes perfectly clean. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a thread chaser and I'm going to put a little bit of oil onto the threads. And we're going to clean the threads with the thread chaser. Highly recommend you take the time to do this. We're going to do this on every bolt hole for not only the cylinder head, but also on, when we put the cylinder head, we're actually going to also do this for the intake manifold surface as well. Um, so make sure that when we torque the intake manifold, when we get to that point, that we do exactly what we're doing here. And that is ensuring that we get the same fluid a lack of resistance in every bolt hole to make sure that our torque is accurate and even. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, you can use an air tool for this. I know the Haynes manual quarterbacks are going to say, oh, don't use air tools. Well, you can, it's, you're, this is cast iron. You're not going to cross thread here. The reason I like to use hand tools, it's not because I'm worried about cross threading. It's because I just like to feel if there's any resistance here. If I feel that there is some issue where I feel more resistance in this hole than I do the other one, I'm going to examine that. Using air tools, I wouldn't have that ability, but you know, I, especially, I, I use air tools when I take them apart all the time. It's, if you're worried about air tools, chances are you probably just don't use them. All right, all done with all the bolt holes. 
and they all seem to be in really good shape. So what I'm gonna do now is one more time, hook up my compressed air and clean out the bolt holes because I wanna remove any crud that I might have dislodged with my thread chaser now. All right, I've just finished cleaning off the cylinder head with compressed air. And the next step that we'll have to do now, we want to completely degrease both of the surfaces for the cylinder head and the block to make sure we don't contaminate our gasket with greaser oil. Remember, we might have some WD-40 on there if we stored the block overnight. We definitely have some oil on the, the block because we used it to clean the threads with our thread chaser. So what I like to use is actually acetone because it's an excellent degreaser and it's highly volatile. So it does a great job of degreasing without leaving any residue. You can also use lacquer thinner and some people use other things or gasoline, whatever you wanna use. But the idea is you wanna have these surfaces perfectly spotless to prepare for the head gasket. So let's go ahead and do that. So I actually usually put a little bit on my gloves too, just to make sure that I don't have any grease on my gloves uh, from touching any tools or whatever kind of like being a surgeon almost. And one of the things that I do like to use are these uh, blue shop towels um, like this because they actually, I think, have less lint than your rag shop towels. So I usually take a couple of them and fold it up in the quarters. And I go pretty generous with this stuff and just make sure that I get all the grease and oil and everything off of here and make sure I don't leave any lint from the towel behind. And feel that my gloves are perfectly clean and it should really have trouble dragging across the surface and that tells me I've got a nice, oil-free, clean, smooth surface. That feels perfect. Make sure that you got all of that perfectly clean. That feels good and you really, really wanna take your time with this. Again, this little bit of preparation here with a few cents of acetone is gonna make all the difference between you doing this job again or not. All right, we're all cleaned up here. Really important to make sure that you uh, also clean out the insides of your cylinders as well. And uh, one of the things that I actually like to do is get a paper towel with a little bit of motor oil to clean out the inside of the cylinders. But again, make sure that you clean the block off again so that you don't have oil on the block. And this feels really good. So we are ready now to go ahead and install our gasket. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the gasket and the bolts. With your cylinder head gasket, there is no debate. You need a new cylinder head gasket and you only get one time to install this thing. Once you torque it down, it's gonna start molding to the conformations of the cylinder head and the block. So um, don't use this until you're ready. But I wanna show you a couple things about the cylinder head gasket because not all of these are intuitive, unfortunately. So don't drop it or bend it or anything like that. This thing, treat it like a baby. You want to make sure that you don't do anything to deform it or crease it in any way. And of course, make sure that your hands are perfectly clean when you touch it. But we're not quite ready for this yet, but what I wanna show you is a couple things. Um, a lot of people have problems determining which side of the gasket goes up because most gaskets are going to have an up sign on them and this one does not. And uh, this one's actually, this one really sucks. I'm not sure I like this gasket very much. Um, you can also check the instructions as well, and you will find that very often the instructions do not tell you which side goes up, and that is indeed the case here. So most gaskets will have a this side up on it, if they don't, then very often what they will have is some kind of manufacturer label or something on them. And the manufacturer label almost always goes up. This one does not have a manufacturer label. Great, this is getting better by the second. So the other thing that most gaskets will have is two different colors. They'll have blue on one side and black on the other. 
Blue will go up, black will go down. I always remember it, blue sky, black ground. And that's not gonna work on this gasket, so that sucks. There's another way you can do it. Sometimes there'll be stripes on one side, kind of a striped pattern, and the other side will be a plain pattern. And that doesn't do it on this gasket. So uh, we've got no up sign, we've got no blue versus black, we've got no stripes, we've got no manufacturer symbol. So what are we gonna do? Because we've also got no instructions. Well, there's another thing. If you notice on this gasket, see if you notice a difference. No fair if you're a professional mechanic. Jeffrey Wilson, don't say anything. You may notice that on this side of the gasket, the rings here between the cylinders, they're called fire rings. And here the rings do not touch. But on the other side, the rings are in a union here. This is the side that will touch the block. So you look for your fire rings and where the fire rings touch, that's the side that will go down to the block. And I will admit, this, this is actually the first time I've ever seen a gasket that, that doesn't have any of the other indications other than the fire rings. But um, sometimes uh, the gaskets are superimposable one side to the other, so you definitely wanna pay attention very carefully because again, once you torque it down, um, it's, it's there forever, uh, or you have to buy a new gasket if you made a mistake. Now, there's another thing that I've got here as well. And this is a set of cylinder head bolts because there is a lot of debate on this. And let's talk about cylinder head bolts because the debate is, should you buy new ones or can you reuse the old ones? And of course, all of the Haynes manual quarterbacks are gonna say, well, you can reuse them once and you put them back in the original locations by putting them in a cardboard holder, this and that. Um, you know, maybe, let me tell you my theory, because I like to think rationally about things. Um, let's see here. Yeah, here's some. Here's the old bolts. Okay, so these are the old bolts from the cylinder head. Obviously, there were more than four of them. And um, can we go ahead and reuse these? Well, of course, one school of thought is, is that these cylinder head bolts, when you torque them, then they stretch. And another school of thought is when you torque them, you can reuse them. But if they're torqued to yield, that is that they use a number of degrees that you turn the bolt, that is actually what stretches them beyond uh, a, a limit where they don't have elasticity. So you can't stretch them the same way again. And at best, you'll thin out the bolt and overstretch it so you can't reuse it. But if you torque the bolt, it's fine. Another school of thought says you always use new cylinder head bolts. You know what? Here's, here's my thought on it, okay? We just measured, where's that other cylinder head? We just measured this cylinder head on the floor next to the trash can by me that it has a gap in it that you could pretty much pass a credit card under. And these are the bolts that held that cylinder head to that block. And remember that that gap was only in the center portion of the cylinder head. So some of these bolts were not stressed like that, while others couldn't hold the gap close to the block. And I will tell you when I remove these bolts, um, some of them as usual, I had to remove a breaker, or use a breaker bar to remove the bolts. And some of the bolts I could have removed with a hand ratchet because they really weren't nearly as torqued down. Do you want to reuse those bolts that were in that kind of an environment? My answer, no way. So under no circumstance, whether it's torqued to yield or torqued or used never before or used once, never would I reuse the bolts from those cylinder head because these are the bolts from the cylinder head that warped. So that ends that. So the other school of thought is, well, what about reusing the cylinder head bolts from this cylinder head that I pulled from the car that didn't have a problem?